Hello, this is Out of the Blue comes Francis Zhu. I'm Francis, and welcome to my show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Out of the Blue comes Francis Zhu show. Today, I have. Soren Linsgaard as my guest.、Um, Soren and I have collaborated very closely、uh, in the "Take Me Home" documentary movie project. And if you have seen the movie, you would also see that he is the main character of the movie. And for anybody who has who have、um, watched the movie, they always. Um, tell me that they felt like they know Soren so intimately just because、um, the the transparency and the trust, the willingness that Soren has. So today, I feel so honored. Soren actually has stayed in the Miracles community、um, after we shoot "Take Me Home" four years ago, and.、Um, Has been devoted his life, his skills,、um, and everything to this、um, very deep healing journey. And now Soren is based in Mallorca, Spain, in our Living Miracles Spain Center. So, hi, Soren. Hi, Francis. Nice to, nice to be with you again. Yeah, yeah. Likewise. <laughs> So joyful. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we haven't really been、um, staying close touch for the last couple of years. So it's really、um, joyful to see you again, and it's always a joy just to hear from you. See how it has been overall in this、um, past year or two. Or just anything in general that that you're going through, I really hope that we can shed some light on、um, the insights and the miracles and whatever you're going through recently. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of things has happened since we made that movie, and、uh, I think you know the movie project lasted almost. You know, two years or something,、mm-hmm. and I I was in Mexico with you, where we were working together,、mm-hmm. and that was really that was really my introduction to living miracles, to to being in a in a community again. Well, I have been in a another community before that didn't that it didn't end so very good. And、mm-hmm. I was just, you know, trying to see if community life was something for me again. And、uh, here I am in Spain. <laughs> And、uh, yeah, I think I think for me,、uh, my whole life has been kind of community oriented, right from the beginning where I left home.、Hmm. I moved into. A community、uh, with other people. There was a political activist mo-、uh, community,、mm-hmm. but、uh, but if but somehow I I have a, I'm attracted to this way of living and、uh, to be able to you know not you know because.、Um, Many many periods in my life, I have been very isolated and alone. But also, then then these periods with community living has come as a result of it. So, yeah. So here I am in Spain, and uh, and uh, and it's just been so rewarding because we have had the opportunity to start a whole new center here. Mm-hmm. And that's been a lot of, a lot of things to do, 
So I've been busy and uh, uh, we have had so many things with the property and uh, maintenance and uh, people coming and uh, and and I have the the honor to be you know involved with all these people coming here and I see the change in people yeah. coming here so it's so rewarding uh, so yeah at the moment I couldn't see myself somewhere else. <laughs> And ever since I met you, I always felt that there is some kind of deep recognition. Like even with A Course in Miracles, I have this feeling that you were waiting for this all your life. And you were, you really could grasp what, um, what this is about, the, the, the depth and the, the deep forgiveness journey. And even though I know that to forgive or to really devote yourself to this journey means you you practice it with everything that comes up. One thing is that we need to be open to allow the emotions to rise up. Um, to face them and I have watched you just see that it, it's not something that that came naturally to you and yet um, you were so willing to do that not only that you were willing to face your emotions let them out but also you did it in front of the camera you you did it in the movie in the documentary movie and I just want to see whether you have any um, insight around how the spirit orchestrated your life um, to facilitate this deep healing where you, you're part of right now. Yeah, it is. It is quite interesting uh, when I, I look back at my life uh, to see how how spirit has orchestrated the whole thing it was actually first when i met you and uh, and around the movie project and after that and 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 the community around you that i that i became aware of the spirit's orchestration uh, in 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 the way that the uh, you laid it out and uh, I wasn't, I mean, I've been spiritually interested for, for many years before that. And, uh, and I started reading A Course of Miracles in 1988, but, and I read that for four years, but I hadn't, I had no real depth and understanding of it. And I began to look for other teachers and, and I went through, a lot of searching and a lot of mistakes and <laughs> and but it was n it was never really this closely uh, connected to to Jesus and to a living presence inside me that was guiding me. I was never really aware of that. I was, mm. I didn't think about that. And it was first when I came into Living Miracles that I became aware, okay, there is a living presence inside me that, want, that, that wants me to be happy, you know, that wants me to lighten up, that wants me to connect, and that wants me to, to have relationships, real relationships. And, uh, and then, you know, when I started looking at, at this orchestration, I could see that when I go back all the way back, you know, to, you know, I was, you know, very young, I could see that spirit has uh, invited me into these relationships, uh, a lot of relationships, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of also uh, sexual relationships. Mm. And uh, and somehow I can see that there is an a, a 
something I had to let go of. You know, there's a uh, so as you you, all, you said there is a there has been an orchestration of a lot of forgiveness lessons in in my life around relationships. You know, people who have you know people that I felt I I outgrew people and left people and some left me so there's been these that i constantly f outgrew situations and left people and then it felt like it went so fast from from one period of my life to and to the next one and then i outgrew that group of people and then to the next one and then there was a new group of people and and that's just been like that for my whole life so and i actually and yeah so i think when i met you and living miracles i just i i somehow i was you know i was checking you out because i really didn't want to be hurt again hmm. but uh but there was some kind of the the way relationships are orchestrated within living miracles are so helpful have been so helpful for me um there is a as i i, I think i've said it before but there is you are a group of people that is not afraid of love and and I needed that. I needed people who was not afraid of love because I was. And um, so, so I've been I've been able to experiment <laughs> with with the love relationships, you know, whatever they knew, look like. <laughs> and uh, and it's just been very very helpful. When when you say love relationships, I know that you're you only get into a relationship now. But I know that from the very beginning, you were opening up. You had these heart opening experiences, and those relationships were not given as um, like intimate relationships. But they are still, according to your love relationships, because you you could express. Um, or share your thoughts and feelings and that was very new to you just even that step oh yeah yeah i was i was so repressed about uh, my feelings uh, when it came to intimate relationships i was really i've had many intimate relationships but it was like they i always it they i always ended up being either hurt or I hurt somebody or there was anger or and it was like it was like I was I was never able to communicate what really happened in those relationships I was never able to express what I felt or I didn't want to express or it was like I could end up in situations where I, I was just I couldn't say it I couldn't feel what was going on and it was just so painful so I actually you know around around 2000 I just stopped I just stopped having you know intimate relationships because I think this is not really this is not going <laughs> it's just too much and uh, and uh, I was actually at that point, you know, before that I was married, uh, or I had a wife and she had a kid and, uh, and it was just, uh, uh, we, we, we just ended up in a situation where we couldn't communicate anymore. So, so yeah, so, so 15 years, you know, I went on, you know, and I went into a community and and uh, and and after that it was it was like i was i was just so depressed about my whole situation uh, depressed about not being able to 
maintain a relationship and not depressed about uh, uh, being so inadequate when it came to communication and to express what I've felt. So, so this whole movie project with you and the movie team and was just a revelation to me actually. I remember I didn't really, because I, I actually in, invited you to Copenhagen a year before mm -hmm. and you had a retreat there, you and Jenny. And, and I have to say, I didn't really understand what you were talking about <laughs> <laughs> at that point. It was first uh, 10 days into the movie project and you had, you had this speech about why we're here. Then, ah, that is what is going on. We have to listen and follow you. <laughs> and, and then have used that as a, as a way of begin to trust, you know, this, the spirit inside. And, uh, mm -hmm. and it was like, all oh, right. And, and I, I've never really thought about that that could be orchestrated that way before. So, 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 so in that, I just, I just, yeah, I just loved you so much, you know, because you offered, you offered that position for me. I could trust you. I could, you know, I had to just listen and follow you and then, you promised me I will come to the other side. And I said, wow, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I want to do that. And, um, and I just, in that, in that relationship or, or whatever it was, you know, it was, you know, we were not together in that way, but I just had this, I loved you so much because I could and 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 you were open to whatever you know I had to say and whatever I had to express and and it was it felt so good to begin to express some you know all, all these feelings that I have been so repressed before and I think it was the first time I really opened up and and dared to uh, to to, to say something like that because I was so unworthy. There was so much unworthiness underneath my whole persona and my body and my all this, you know, uh, self-hatred was so immense. And I've kind of, you know, I've kind of navigated around that, you know, trying to, you know, make, things happen even though I you know there was also this self-hatred and unworthiness and and I you know then I compensated in other ways you know I you know I could do everything else you know but uh, but this to to open up to that kind of love actually felt so liberated liberating and um and I, you know, it was like, okay, I can, it was like a, a door opened, you know, it was, yeah, it was a heart opening experience. And, and when I came here to, to Spain, it kind of continued with Emily in the side, in the same way that I could just love her in, not in a physical way, but I could just love her and, and and then she would direct me and there would be i would be angry and i would cl close down but then she would still be there you know even though i was angry and close down <laughs> she would still be there and say what's going on you know she wanted you know she wanted this heart heart to be open all the time and i was just fascinated that that i could still I could go through all these uh, closed down situations because that's what I've been doing my whole life. When, when I didn't get what I wanted or if I, if I was uh, told that I made a mistake or then I, 
close down and I close my heart and then, you know, I just separate and, and then I, you know, I take care of my own stuff and all this, what we do, mm -hmm. you know, the human, <laughs> human condition. And, but here it was like, I could maybe, you know, sometimes I could maybe go for two days or three days, but that, that's been the most, then, then, you know, I had to, I had to talk, you know, I had to tell her, you know, now I'm really angry and now I'm disappointed. Um, you know, I have this betrayal. I think you have betrayed me and, the, mm -hmm. and all these feelings that is coming up. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that's such a, a interesting description because while you're talking, I remember this chapter in A Cross in Miracles, um, The Healed Relationship, chapter 17. And it really, Jesus was talking about special relationship as a major defense of the ego, defense against the truth. You know, along this, this um this journey we learn okay uh, a lot of the things we grow up learning to do are nothing but defenses against the truth against the present moment um they are just ways to hold on to grievance but special relationship is one that jesus defines as the goal of the relationship is to separate no matter you know what form you you're looking for bodies can be sought to be together and yet the goal is still to separate in mind and that is where um, the relationship will have tremendous amount of pain because of the goal underneath it and when you're talking about the other relationships in your earlier part of the life, um, you were just saying that it, 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 you know, there were a lot of hurt and a lot of disappointment, but you, you couldn't find a way to communicate, to communicate, which is also, a, a, a communication is an attempt to, to join, to truly join in mind, to dissolve the barriers or the private thoughts um, that separate each other. So what I see that happened is that really um, you started to feel safe and allow your heart to open up. And when the heart opened up, of course, a lot of love are coming out. And you also feel you receive a lot of care, a lot of love and, um, you know, communication from, from everybody. But but the ego, as what it is, it still wants to defend against the true joining and the connection at every turn. So it's still going to use the mechanism that is familiar with, which is to shut down, to avoid, to run away from, and shut down communication as the main, um, main tactic, I would say. So... So I, that's exactly what I see, you know, we're practicing, but you so courageously keep, keep doing is that even though there is a tremendous amount of temptation to shut down and to close down communication, not tell anybody um, what's going on, just go into this dark corner in your own world, but you couldn't really do that for too long anymore <laughs> you you still have to come up to say okay i am mad right now can we talk about it so that i'm not gonna be anymore so that you see that the goal of the relationship actually shifted the goal of the relationship from holding grievances and um push away true joinings in mind now it, it goes to the goal is to be happy and to facilitate true connection and joining and also to be happy. And in that goal, the bodies 
not even because you weren't in a relationship for the longest for a long time and that wasn't a problem for you you know because you feel the 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 openness of the connection you felt the true intimacy in mind but but i also know that you you got into a relationship i would say uh three months ago that's that's um an intimate relationship that you started with Jessica. And uh, how how did the spirit or has, has the spirit continue to use this intimate relationship to continue to open you up? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, yeah, yeah, already already last year, Yiska came here. Uh, I think it was in August last year, just to try it out. And uh, she was here for a month or something like that. And it was like, it was like in that month, it was so different from the rest of the period I've been here because we had so lot, we have a lot of time together. We went out and we went out for, for dinner and for drinks so it was like i don't know it had never happened before it was like spirit really wanted spirit really wanted this to happen and she went back to holland and then she you know she had all this with her children and her ex-husband and everything was taken care of and then she came again and then then we could feel now the real mind training started hmm. and uh and because there was a lot of, uh, we didn't get into a relationship right away. Uh, it, you know, now I think, yeah, she came back in November or something. And it was first like three months ago we put in. But it was, it was like, it was like felt that, that it was guided. It, it felt like, you just get, you know, <laughs> she felt it from the beginning and and kind of okay so i i'm i was open i re, i wanted a, a relationship but it felt like okay so this is given and 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 that played a big that plays a big uh, role in it that it is given that you know it's not a random relationship and and somehow that that is the foundation for for whatever comes up through between us that it's given and 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 there's some kind of uh, holistic or, or or whole feeling about that that makes it easier to cope with all the stuff that comes up because a lot of stuff do come up and uh and you know, I'm in the mid sixties, and and Yiska in the in the mid fifties. So we have had a long life uh, before this, and uh, and we have different expectations. We have been interested in different things, and so. But basically, what what uh, what happened in the beginning was. An explosion, an explosion of intimacy, and uh, and it was like it was like, wow, this is this is given from heaven. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's just you know, Jesus has given me a fantastic woman, and uh, and I enjoyed it so much. And then <clears throat> you know, and then things became up that suddenly her role was from from following you know because i was in charge of main maintenance here for example and i was telling her what to do then emily changed it so she became <laughs> the one that told me what to do and that changed the dynamic so much that I got so angry. <laughs> so, who is she to tell me what to do? And uh, so, so there is a, you know, and then I had to face all the shutdown again, you know. Oh, I, I was shutting down. I was angry. 
uh, and I had to be open about it, and I didn't want to be open about it. I was too, you know, my pride was too big, and but so so that happened, yeah. And then this whole area around sexuality also became something that uh, that was a, a healing. Uh, or, and still is a healing area for us because somehow I think we have both placed some some of our identity in th this part of the intimacy of being together. You know, what kind of, who am I having sex and stuff like that? And, and I think for Yiska, it was like she felt that she was ob ob obligated to give sex whenever, you know, to, to kind of, it was sex was the glue in a relationship. If there was no sex, there was no glue. So there would, there would be no relationship. And she didn't want to be, she didn't want to have that kind of motivation. So she she wanted to find out if there was no sex was there any glue left so and for me that was just okay so i'm gonna be the glue or well, who's gonna be the glue now <laughs> so and when i feel i have you know that i want sex and she doesn't want what what who's gonna decide that and 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 is this just a phase in our relationship or is that something that is permanent now so all these things come come up you know and and from from me being a person that couldn't even say i want sex and i have still kind of i don't want to say it you know you know like the pride is just you know she should want me she should want me or i i don't want to you know I, you know i don't want to say it i don't want to uh, beg for it uh, you know she should want me you know, there's all of this dynamics coming up you know and and i just have to be open about it now and i have to talk i have to communicate and have to say to her how i feel about this and and it's just so on one hand you know i'm um, i'm um, uh, I, I feel exposed, and and the other day we we saw this movie uh, called Chaos Walking, and and we uh, it's about an, a planet where the men has killed <laughs> all the women because because the men you could see the private thoughts of the men, but not the women. The women you couldn't see what they were thinking, and. And the men couldn't stand it. They couldn't stand it being in, so vulnerable and being uh, being uh, exposed. And I, I I feel that you know I hate <laughs> to be uh, exposed in that way. And it it's about it's about pride and it's about yeah just yeah basically feeling exposed and um, and being at the mercy. Of her. You know, what I I like so much is that you said this relationship was given and there was no doubt about it, because that's exactly how I see spirit at work in my life and in pretty much everybody that I have a close um contact with I really see when things are given it was so obvious everything time space everything changed to facilitate this this new configuration nobody can even nobody had make made it happen nobody had any foresaw thoughts to to this should be it just happens it happens and yeah, and a lot of relationships I see in, in this community come in that way. A lot of new projects come in that way. And 
I didn't know this, but it feels one of those um, very obvious that even the whole center of Spain's spaciousness got rearranged. Suddenly you from this super busy maintenance um, leader become some, somehow you have time to go out all the time. You, you, you have time, like almost spirit orchestrated for you to date. And I know at the time you didn't have any thoughts to want to get into dating or even relationship, but that was just how given it was. And, and once it was given, that's how the spirit really changes um, a special relationship into holy relationship. He is going to change the underlying purpose. And how is he going to change the underlying purpose unless he's going to give uh, the, the, the relationship and also give every single healing that's within the relationship. So I really see that what happened is, is just all the past relationships that were given to serve the ego's purpose, this one is not going to be so. It's going to be used for opening up, for deepening into finding this loving presence that you talked about that's living inside and extending that. And so I, I trust what is happening now um, seems to be very new to you. You, you. you have never really encountered a relationship where you can talk about this most vulnerable and even sometimes embarrassing thoughts that you have. And I want to know what is the what is the the reward of that? Like, do you do you sense the the outcome and the miracle in that? Yeah, yeah, I I do because uh, uh, not not only do we uh, you know we share a bit, but actually we are sharing facilitator role. We are going to share prayer and support role. We are sharing maintenance. We're sharing everything. She's we are together all the time, you know. And I, I've never been together with people all the time in that sense. I mean, uh, so so it's just it's so radical a change for me that I I'm sometimes just overwhelmed by it. But on the other hand, uh, it's like I cannot hide anymore. So I've been hiding a lot, and I'm still kind of trying to. But but now I'm, you know, I'm I'm you know I'm watched, <laughs> and and it and it feels like it feels like I I'm I'm more awake. You know, I feel more present. Uh, you know, from from just three months ago, that there is a there is a, a an, an aliveness in in the mind that is, you know, and even though I get these, I I get these. Uh, uh, periods of, of, you know, where my pride is, you know, hurt and uh, I get angry and I have these periods still, but I feel they're getting, I, I feel they are getting uh, shorter and shorter and, uh, and it's like, oh, I have, you know, it's like I'm, sh I'm sharing, <laughs> sharing a life so much closer I'm close it feels like I'm closer to life <clears throat> I just have I just have this sentence from the A Course of Miracles in mind that says uh, something like uh, truth will come to you by your desire as you lost it for desiring something else mm -hmm. 
and uh, yeah, because I've I've been very, you know, I've I have sought, I have been searching for love through uh, through sex for you know in my former life, and it felt like I lost my way in that, so I had to stop. I can't had to stop, and. I feel this is a way to come back, not not into not into that kind of being lost in sex, but actually to be intimate in a in a in a frame of you know this is true, this is mm-hmm. uh, this is true to me, this is how I feel right now, mm-hmm. and uh, there's nothing really wrong <laughs> in how I feel and there's nothing wrong in how she feels and and for I think for both of us it's just well a deep sense of trust in that spirit has it and mm. uh, and and in that I I think it just feels like a surrendering to that uh, trust uh, and uh, and I really, I really, I don't want to impose my desire on her. On the other hand, I don't want to be silent about it either. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, you know, repress it. So, so it's so. I think for both of us, I think it's a, a, a being true to what is what we feel and then the spirit is kind of working mm. with it i, I mm. feel somehow there is a okay we don't know what is going on actually we just have there's a lot of the past that is coming up through our beliefs and you know our former lives is coming it has to be washed washed out and and then we don't know what's going on but so we just we just talk. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Mm. It just reminds me of this sentence in um, lesson one thirty five. Jesus says, "Let um, let our life." be a meaningful encounter with truth that only our defenses can conceal. That means let each moment be this meaningful encounter with truth. Now we're just standing here defenseless with, with defenselessness and to share and expose everything that's in our mind that's standing in the way between us and this vast truth and ask the truth to be given to us, to our open mind. I feel like you are the living demonstration of that, you know, every, ever since I know you, every single thing that rises up was just willingly expressed and released with the purpose of forgive, forgiveness so that your mind can be open your heart can be open and this moment can be left without any past and can be can be revealed mm. by the spirit mm. beautiful yeah just to be able to begin to uh, it- to discern in in the in the mind that this 
you know, because I, I, I couldn't even feel, oh, this is, this is, this feeling is not good. I was so, you know, not trained in the mind. So I just thought this is normal, but actually I didn't feel good. So, so just to begin to admit this is not a good feeling and then be open about that has been kind of as a big step forward for me that mm -hmm. to open up to, I did, I don't feel good. Mm -hmm. And then to be open and, and see, you know, in, in, the, in opening up, then something else can come in and, and then to begin to discern, okay, so this is the truth, you know, what, <laughs> you know, what is truth, you know, mm. and what is not true, you know, to begin to be aware of that, I really, I really feel that's what's happening at the moment. It's, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's so beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Soren, for this time and for sharing everything in your life so openly. It always feels so inspiring to hear. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Love you. Yeah, I love you. Thank you, everybody else. Thank you for show, for listening in, and uh, hope to see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>